yeah, so we're going to work out the Lewis structures for these five compounds and also the Vesper geometries for those five compounds using the, um, oops, didn't mean to do that, using the table that I gave you in class the other day. Um, so starting with, I suggest you pause this, work these out on your own, and then hit play to um, see them worked out. Don't try to, you know, work these out with me because I'm going to go way too fast. So starting with NH3, N has five valence electrons, and each hydrogen has one. So that gives us a total of five plus three is eight valence electrons. So you put the first element in the center, draw the remaining elements around it, connect them. That just took care of six electrons, so we're left with two. And hydrogen, not allowed to have more than two, so that means these remaining two electrons have to go on nitrogen. So now to look at our Vesper, this nitrogen is our central atom, and it has one, two, three bonds, and it has one lone pair, which gives us a total of four charge clouds. And four charge clouds with one lone pair gives us a shape of trigonal pyramidal. Alright, moving on to CH2O. Carbon has four dots. Hydrogen, we've got two of them, and again, each hydrogen only has one, and oxygen has six. So that gives us a total of four, five, six, twelve electrons. If there is a carbon, it automatically goes in the center. The other guys go around it. So hydrogens, oxygen, and connect them. So that just took care of six electrons, so we have six left. Oxygen is really not happy, so give him those remaining six electrons. So now we're left with no electrons. But carbon's not happy because carbon only has six. So oxygen being the generous element that it is, is going to take two of its lone pair electrons and share them with carbon. And so our final structure is carbon bonded to a hydrogen, bonded to a hydrogen, double bonded to an oxygen, and the oxygen has two lone pairs. Well, carbon, whoa, that's really strange. Uh, carbon is our central atom here. What just happened? Hello? Okay, sorry about that. Carbon is our central atom. So we look at carbon and we see that carbon has one, two, three bonds and zero lone pairs. A double bond is considered to be just a bond. It's a double bond and it's sharing more electrons, but as far as charge clouds are concerned, it's only considered to be one thing. So we have a total of three charge clouds with zero lone pairs. So you look at your table and three charge clouds, no lone pairs is trigonal planar. So similar to the shape of the ammonia molecule, but instead of being, uh, you know, kind of like a kicked up triangle, it's a flat triangle. So it's planar. Let's see, coming back down here, let's see if I can erase this without it screwing up again. Delete. All gone. Okay, moving on to SCL6. Um, sulfur has six dots, six valence electrons. We got six chlorines. Each chlorine has seven dots because it is in group 17. So six times seven is 42, plus this six is 48 valence electrons. First element goes in the center. The other guys go around it. So just kind of evenly space your chlorines. It doesn't have to be perfect. And then connect them with lines. And that just took care of one, two, three, four, five, six. Six times two is 12, so 12 electrons leaves us with 36 left. Each chlorine needs six more to be happy, to have its full octet. And remember, sulfur is one of those elements that is capable of holding more than eight electrons, and it's because of that empty 
3D sublevel that it has, that it, that's where it can store those extra electrons. So that took care of our remaining 36. We check, is everybody happy? The chlorines are all happy. Sulfur's just fine having more than eight. So now we look at our center atom. So sulfur right there is our central atom. And we say, okay, how many bonds does it have? It's got one, two, three, four, five, six bonds and zero lone pairs. So we go to our chart and six bonds with, er, sorry, charge clouds, six charge clouds with zero lone pairs is octahedral in shape, or you can also call this square bipyramidal. Okay, next up is XEF4, xenon tetrafluoride. So, xenon <clears throat> is a noble gas, so it has a full octet. Well, why does it bond, you ask? Uh, xenon and argon and krypton are capable of bonding. They don't do it very often, but they are capable of doing it. And fluorine is one of those elements that the noble gases just can't resist. So we have four fluorines. each with seven valence electrons. So that gives us a grand total of 28 plus eight is 36 electrons. So you put the first element in the center, put the fluorines around it, connect them. That just took care of eight electrons, which drops us down to 28. Each fluorine needs six more to satisfy that octet rule. So that just took care of 24 electrons. That leaves us with four left. Can't add any more to the fluorine, so these remaining four just have to go on our central atom. And xenon, again, is one of those ones that is capable of holding more than the octet of electrons. So looking at our central atom, xenon, of course, being that atom, we have one, two, three, four bonds and we have one lone pair, two lone pairs. That gives us a grand uh, total of six charge clouds. So we go to our table, six charge clouds go across to where it has two lone pairs and our shape is square planar. Last one, SO2. Uh, sulfur has six electrons, and each oxygen also has six. So, first element goes in the center. Oxygen's on either side. Connect them. Oh, I forgot to count up the electrons. So, six plus 12, 18 electrons. Um, put your six on the oxygens, and that just took care of, that's eight, that's another eight electrons, which is 16, leaves us with two left, so just plop those two on sulfur. Now we have to check, is everybody happy? Well, the oxygens are, but the sulfur's not, because the sulfur only has two, four, six electrons, so it needs two more. This is one of those situations where you could borrow from this side and form a double bond, Ox this oxygen could share those, or you could have the flip of that, and this oxygen could keep the six electrons, lone pair electrons that it has, and this oxygen could share. So you have these two situations, remember this is called resonance, and they either bounce between these two, or the actual structures and average of these two, either way. But so we still need to find the geometry of this molecule. So here's our center atom. And same center atom down here in the bottom. We were to count up the bonds. In this particular structure, we have a bond here and a bond here, so two bonds. Down here, we have a bond here and a bond here, so we also have two bonds. And then looking at lone pairs, each structure has one lone pair. The reason that I'm doing this on both of them is to show you that with resonance, they're still gonna have the same 
shape. So in both cases, we have a charge cloud of three. So two bonds, or three charge clouds with one lone pair. Check out your table, that structure is bent. Or you could call it angular, whichever works for you. And that, ladies and gents, is all we have. If you have any more questions, I'll be available for tutoring Wednesday morning, Thursday morning, and Friday morning. So, y'all have fun.